Hello and welcome to What The Math. In today's video, we're going to be exploring an idea of financial investment. Now, you may have heard that, you know, investing in a real estate property and basically buying a house and then renting it out to other people is probably one of the best investments you can make. And so a lot of people usually start early. They try to buy an apartment, they then rent it out, they get a mortgage, they start renting out another house and so on and so forth. And essentially, a lot of people have made a lot of money that way and it's possibly a very good way of ma making money. But we're going to be comparing it to another way, which is investing into index funds funds or basically investing into stocks that are very, very diversified. Now, what is an index fund? Essentially, an index fund is like a basket or a bag. This is, of course, a bag, very, very badly drawn bag of various stocks. For example, there's a there's an Apple stock in there. There is a Google stock in there and a hundred or even a thousand of various stocks all together. They're all diversified. And uh, essentially, this is like a basket that you can buy uh, on a stock market. And the most famous one is actually in the US and it's called S&P 500. Um, it's the stock that consists of the biggest 500 companies in the US, including Google, including Apple, Microsoft, and so on and so forth. And uh, all of these stocks together, they essentially show you how the American market is usually doing. Uh, on average, um, if you were to look from, you know, when this actually started being in existence to uh, up, up until now, on average, this has increased by about approximately 10%, actually 10.5, but let's just say 10% per year since the 70s. So S&P 500 has been growing approximately 10% per year. Uh, now, it may not sound like a lot, but we'll see how it goes. And so this is uh, what we're going to be comparing it with. And of course, the other choice is to buy a house. So, you know, what if you have, uh, you saved that enough money to have your first mortgage, you buy your first house, you start renting it out, so that you get some rent from it, you cover your mortgage with that rent, then um, you pay off your mortgage and you buy another house, and then you do the same here, then finally, uh, you retire and then you leave off, um, you know, the rent for the rest of your retirement until you die, essentially. Uh, so basically rental uh, investment or rental income is a better word. So rental income versus stocks re uh, or related income. So let's do some math. Let's see what, what's actually better, what, what works better. And we're going to start with, with the rentals. So let's just say, you know, uh, this is your first, first house. You're, um, you're about to buy your first house. You're like you know, 30 years old or something. You saved up $100,000. Uh, so you have your first savings. This is going to be a down payment for your mortgage. And uh, with that down payment, you can usually buy a house that's uh, four times more expensive. So essentially, you can buy a $400,000 house. $400,000 house. This is your first investment. And then you're going to be basically renting this out because maybe you still live with your parents. Maybe you live somewhere else. Maybe you're renting somewhere else. Um, and we're also going to make an assumption that every year you will be able to save approximately $15,000 more. So every year you're going to be saving uh, $15,000 and you can then uh, use this after, I guess, maybe 10 years or 15 years to buy another house. So all your savings will be going to a second down payment. Uh, and the, the rent here in this house, rent here, is going to be your mortgage payment. So everything you make from rentals will be your mortgage. Now, this is a best case scenario. Normally, mortgage is not really covered by rental alone. Uh, but, you know, best ca case scenario, maybe you have um, a, a really good house or it's in, in a very expensive area. Or um, if you spread your mortgage to like 30 years, this is usually the case. If you spread your mortgage to 30 years, you can usually uh, make this happen. So let's do, let's do some math. Now there's this mortgage calculator I found um, online, and it's actually quite uh, quite nice and quite efficient. So uh, home value is four hundred thousand dollars. We're going to be loaning or taking a loan of three hundred thousand dollars because our down payment is one hundred thousand. Now interest rate. So this actually varies a lot. Uh, currently, for example, in Canada, this is actually six percent. Now in U.S., it's actually lower. So let's uh, let me see what, if I can find it. And just like that, uh, if you look up average mortgage rate, it gives you current uh, rate for US. So uh, if you can look here, 30 year mortgage is approximately 4%, 15 year mortgage is approximately 3.17%. Now this is actually very, very low and it's because uh, US economy in 2015 is very, very strong. This will go up and it can go up to double digits. It can even be like 12 or 14% and usually it varies. Uh, if you want to have fixed, um, 
a fixed mortgage, it's actually going to be a little bit higher, but we're going to, you know, it's a best case scenario. We're going to say that it's 4% for 30 years. In other words, you're going to be paying off this mortgage until your retirement because you want to have an affordable mortgage payment that you can basically use your rent for. So we change, we're going to change this to 30 years, property tax that we're going to leave the same. Uh, so what will be our monthly mortgage payment? And the monthly mortgage payment is approximately $1.8,000. So almost $2,000. Now, is that, um, is that possible? Can we actually get this much rent from this particular investment? So when it comes to trying to calculate, um, you know, how much to rent your house for, the formula is actually not particularly, um, set in stone, but it's, there's a, there's a rough sort of, uh, formula you, you can use. And it kind of works like this. So let's just say your house is $100,000. Um, you can technically charge 1% of this per month. Now, this is just pure, uh, pure rent, pure rent income, not including maintenance fee, not including anything else. Um, the more expensive the house, the less the percentage is. So for a $400,000 house, you can possibly charge approximately 0.7%. And that is, of course, approximately $2,800 per month of rent from this particular property. So this is pure rent. Now, here's the thing about rents. Um, you don't just get this. You also have to calculate how much will it cost to maintain the house, how much will it cost you to repair, to do renovations. Uh, you know, maybe you're, uh, someone runs away, you lose money and so on and so forth. So you have to take that into consideration. And there's actually a, a national um, statistics for that. And here's just one example of such statistics. So this is actually uh, from many, many different properties. So it kind of calculates everything right here. And what we're looking for is um, this right here, net operating income. So it's called NOI. And this is essentially the percentage of uh, actual money that you'll make from a certain property. So it goes, you know, it goes anywhere from 57%, which is right here, to uh, I think the high is like 62%. So let's just go with an average of about 60. So this is kind of a uh, rough estimate, but let's just say that you, from this particular, from this particular amount, you'll be getting at least 6% in pure, pure income or pure, you know, money that goes into your pocket. So this is of course not taxed, but it will be taxed, but we're not going to be, we're going to be assuming for, just for now that it's not taxed. So this is multiplied by 0 0.6, which is 60%, of course, and this will be the number of money that you'll get for this particular, um, house as a rent. So 680 is very close to the mortgage. So, you know, in, in the best case scenario, you'll be able to basically pay off the mortgage just using uh, nothing but rent. Of course, it's in reality, it's probably not going to work, but let's just say it's working for your first house. You can actually just do this. So, all right. So uh, for, you know, the next 30 years, you'll be paying this off. So let's wait until your next house. So let's just say for the next house, we're going to be uh, getting a 15 year mortgage. And it's going to be a slightly more expensive house because we're going to be now saving our money for 15 years. So for 15 years, we're just going to be saving money, $15,000 per year, just so that we can actually get a more expensive house and rent it for even more. So right here, it says 15 year mortgage is about 3.17%. And uh, after 15 years, we'll save approximately or actually not approximately, but exactly $225,000. So that's our down payment for a house that will cost, multiply by four, $900,000. So we can actually, you know, now afford a more expensive house. And of course, this is ignoring the inflation because, uh, well, for the sakes of um, ease of calculation, but also because usually rent is actually inflation adjustable, uh, we're not going to be looking at inflation here. So this is a $900,000 by today's money, basically. So in today's money, uh, it's a pretty good house, probably a mansion. And so let's see how much you can actually rent this for. Or sorry, not the, not to rent this for yet, but um, how much you can actually uh, have to pay for the for the mortgage. So you'll have to get a loan of $675,000 and it's 3.17% uh, interest rate for 15 years. And you have to pay five point uh, six thousand dollars it shows you your, your interest your principal rate that you have to pay and so that yeah this is much higher than um than the first house obviously let's see if the rent will actually cover this now for a house that's worth nine hundred thousand dollars let's just assume that you can still charge about 0.7 percent of the house's value as a rent per month 
um, you'll be able to charge approximately $6,300 per month. Now, this, of course, is before the NOI adjustment. So you have to multiply this by 60% again to get the value of 3780. So you'll be getting a pure $3,780 in your pocket, which unfortunately is not going to be enough to cover your mortgage. So your second house, because it's more expensive and, and you want to have a more expensive house just for the sakes of value, will not actually cover your mortgage. So you may have to um, use your savings that you, you're saving, you know, $15,000 per year to help you cover this because with your savings, you'll be able to cover the mortgage. So for the next 15 years, all of your savings plus the rent will, will be going toward paying off your mansion. So essentially just to pay off this amount, you'll need to, you know, you'll need to uh, kind of use your savings for, for the mortgage. And so now, uh, 30 years later, you know, 30 years later, you're ready to retire and you have two fully paid off houses. You have one smaller house that's worth in, you know, in current money, $400,000. And you have a bigger house uh, that's worth $900,000. And both of these houses will, you know, obviously giving you pure rent now because you just paid off your mortgage. And you, you might be living somewhere else, of course. We're, we're just not taking this into consideration right now. Uh, and because you retire, you don't really have any other, any, um, income. So your only income is rent. In other words, your properties are worth $1.3 million. And just to calculate how much rent you can get from this, what we do is we multiply the amount by the percentage I mentioned before, which is 0.07%. This will give you $9,100 per month. So this means that you can charge $9,100 per month of pure rent. Now, we still need to adjust this for the, you know, things like repairs and um, renovations and so on and so forth. So multiply this by 60% again to get the value of 5,460. So this is per month. Let's do this per year, multiply by 12. So your annual income from this house uh, after all of the, you know, uh, spendings and everything is $65,500. So $65,000, i just say $65,500. Now this is before tax. Now the thing about rent is that it is taxed just like a regular income. So in other words, you'll be in $65,000 bracket. And I'm going to just for the sakes of, uh, you know, simplicity because I am from Canada. I'm going to be using Canadian tax here and use a Canadian tax calculator to see how much will be, will be I get, will I be getting from this in pure, pure, pure profit, pure money. So here's a really awesome tax calculator from taxtips.ca and it essentially gives you everything. And um, here, well, all we need to do is enter the number into employment and other income. And the number we had was 65,500. So we enter it here, click enter, and it gives us the percentage. We're looking at this number here. We're ignoring this because that's just an average. Um, and so let's just say we live in Vancouver, which is in the province of BC. Uh, the employment tax for this province is 29.7%. In other words, you'll, um, you'll be losing 29.7% from this number toward your tax. So what this means is that you'll only be getting 46,000 uh, dollars in, you know, in tax, tax free, uh, profits because everything else will be taxed. So, okay. So after, you know, 30 years, when you retire, you'll be getting $46,000, $46,000 of pure profits. And I mean, this is a really good retirement, you know, for 46, and this is in, you know, today's money for $46,000, you can leave, live a really, really good life. Except that, of course, since you do have a rental, and you're pretty old probably by now and you have, you know, two houses where people are renting. Um, it might be difficult, I mean, especially if you're old, you have to take care of rent, uh, rentals, you have to possibly still do repairs. And, uh, you know, so this value will possibly uh, be different or it might go up, might go down, depending on your situation. But it will be approximately on average $46,000. All right, so that was real estate. Now let's look at uh, at stocks or specifically at index funds. And here we're going to be in exactly the same situation. We're 30 years old. We have $100,000 in our pocket. Instead of buying a house, though, what we're going to do is we're going to put this into an index fund. Specifically, we're going to buy, let's just say, um, Vanguard 
uh, version of S&P 500, which is, I believe, called VOO. You can look it up. Um, and this is essentially an index fund that allows you to buy S&P 500. Um, and this will be increasing on average by approximately 10%. Now, this is just historical. It might change in the future. You know, US might collapse. You might, US might become even more powerful. You never know what's going to happen, but we're going to just going to go with historical values because if US collapses, the uh, value of property will go down as well. So they're kind of, usually they're kind of depend on each other. So here, um, we're also going to be um, introducing $15,000 per year, just like we did with houses, because that's how much we will be saving. Um, so every year, this, this will increase by $15,000. And of course, this is for 30 years. And because this is not a rental, really, you have to not worry about nothing else. So every year, you invest this. This is your initial investment. And then you basically just sit back, do your own thing. You don't have to worry about anything else. So let's see if that actually beats the um, uh, the rentals. And I'm going to be using a calculator from moneychimp.com right here because that's probably the most convenient one I've found. Uh, so this is how it works. Current principle is how much you invested initially. This is $100,000. Annual addition is $15,000. And uh, how many years to grow? Well, 30 years, just like the houses. And interest rate is a it's 10%, it's actually 10.5, but let's just say 10%. Uh, compounded annually and, and so on and so forth. So what will be the, basically your final, final value after 30 years? You will actually have accumulated $4.5 million, approximately $4.5 million. Uh, and this, of course, is in the future money. So here we do have to take into account inflation. Before we do that though, uh, so this is what you can possibly do. One of the better ways of doing this in the future is then to take all of this amount and put it into a stock or, you know, uh, a fund that gives you dividends. Uh, you know, usually 4% dividends is sort of like the ones you're looking for. So out of this, you can usually get 4% per year in dividends without losing uh, value on your money. Uh, so what we want to do is divide this by 25 just to get the idea of how much you'll be making per year in, um, you know, in dividends. And I'm going to be doing this very roughly because I don't want to put those extra numbers in there. So 4.5 million dollars divided by 25 will give us 180 thousand dollars per year. In other words, this is your uh, your profits um, per year. Now, don't get too excited yet because this is actually in future money. This is not adjusted for inflation. We do have to do this here because. And like rent, this is not adjusted for inflation. And we're going to be doing this with the same calculator. So 180 thousand annual addition of zero, 30 years. And now inflation uh, on average is approximately 3.5%. So we're going to put minus 3.5% in here and then calculate. And this gives you today's money value. So in other words, you will be making 61,000 or I guess almost 62,000 in uh, income per year. Now that's already better than, than the rental. Now here's the even better part. Many countries, including Canada, have um, a special thing going with dividends. Like for Canada, for example, and many people don't know about this, if you invest your money into Canadian companies um, and that pay you dividends, you will get a huge, huge, huge tax, uh, tax refund. Essentially, you can basically get tax-free income. So there's a calculator for this as well, and I'm going to be posting all of these in the description below, but let me show you what I mean by this. So we're going to go back to this calculator I showed you before from taxtips.ca, and here... Uh, so yeah, it was 65,000 for uh, your other employment. Of course, it was taxed, so it was a much lower value. Now, we, we, this time we have 61,000. So it's a little bit more than that, but let's just say it's 61,000. And we're going to put it not in here, but in Canadian eligible dividends. If you put it here, you'll see that uh, the eligible dividend tax is much, much lower. So in BC, in Vancouver, it's about 10%. So you're, you're actually losing only 10% on this particular income, meaning that you are now getting, uh, time is 90%. You're getting 54 or almost $55,000 in pure money. No, uh, no tax, nothing, no worries about tenants, nothing else. So it's almost $10,000 higher than the equivalent of a rental. Now, the beautiful part is that you can actually get this to zero. If you were to make, um, or if you were to settle for a 50,000 value in today's money, you would actually pay zero tax. In other words, you can get zero 
tax on you know your income if you're okay with getting fifty thousand dollars per year just from your dividends and that's actually an amazing amazing value especially since this is actually more than most people make today just by working you can get this in you know in pension and essentially uh, this is your your own self-made pension and this even gives you a, a little bit of credit so that if you make any other income like for example let's just say you make some other money from something else um, you can then get a little bit of credit and it will actually still decrease this value uh, so you won't get taxed as much uh, so it's a pretty amazing way of making money uh, in Canada and in some other countries. So if you were to invest all of your savings into the, um, you know, company or just a stock that pays you a lot of dividends from that country, you can make a huge amount of money and it's all tax free. Or basically it's not really tax free. It's that you get this tax back at the end of the year. Uh, so what we've learned from this is that investing into real estate or at least in Canada, I guess, uh, is actually about 80% as efficient as investing into index funds or, you know, S&P 500 specifically. So this would be probably the best way to invest, especially because it's hassle-free. You don't have to worry about tenants. You don't have to worry about uh, repairs. You don't have to worry about property tax or, you know, uh, what if suddenly there's a sudden uh, spill near near your house, uh, some kind of a truck spills some toxic material. Suddenly the property value drops. None of that happens. Here, this is Obviously, this will fluctuate, it will crash, it will go up dramatically, but on average, it will usually be about 10%. This has, this is a historic value that has never changed. Um, so personally, I would definitely go with index funds, mostly because it's hassle free and especially because it allows you to create this dividend tax free, um, account. Other than that, if you still want to buy a house and you want to rent, that's up to you, but I personally would go with this, especially if you're a young investor and you're looking for something, look into index funds, look into a company called Vanguard and look at their uh, different index funds that they're offering. Uh, they have office in almost every major country nowadays and they have different index funds that are available to both US and international investors. All right, so that's it for What The Math. Hopefully you enjoyed this comparison of investment video and watch out for more. There's going to be more coming where I explain different types of other investments and, you know, investments that are just not worth it. And I'm also going to be talking about various financial math and statistics stuff that is super fun for me, maybe very boring for you. And of course, we're going to have more gaming videos where I explain various concepts in various video games. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. Game you later, guys. Bye bye.